Having said that, let's move to the next board, which is why behind classification and marking. So what I'm taking an example here or as an analogy here that I have a postal office service, right? Very interesting. And most of the concept of networking, believe me, they are pretty much close to the postal office, whatever we have, right? And if you know the service well, that is going to be great. For example, you can compare whatever you write as an address. It is a destination address. And if you want that, if the letter is not received by the destination, then it is you have to write your own address also, which is going to be source address. And the most of the thing you can compare from the postal office. And that is why I have taken an example from postal office itself uh, to understand why do we need classification and marking or the first place, what exactly the classification and marking is. So suppose Anjali here, and we have Mr. Rahul here. And of course, the boss already has said them, I already had, uh, have told them that basically you need to implement quality of service in our network. And Rahul and Anjali are discussing all the things with respect to QS. And the first concept they get is the classification marking and Rahul doesn't get it. And that is why Anjali is taking an example of this postal office service that we have these many letters, right? And these letters are normal letters, but when somebody just came and delivered this letter inside the postal office uh, building, right? They have specifically mentioned that I want my letter number one to go as fast as possible, right? Means if you want, you can take one day or maybe I want to send this letter to Bangalore and it should reach the same day. They want the same day delivery, right? Similarly, the letter number two want to have this privilege or this type of delivery maybe it is going to bombay but they want that this letter should be delivered to the same day right then we have another category of letters maybe these two which want to be delivered quickly but they do not put the restriction that i want these letters to be delivered on the same day right and this is done when these letters came to the post office maybe once you uh, you, you sometimes you go to the postal office and tell that i want this to be delivered with this kind of service and then there are some letters which come to postal office without any uh, such constraints on it right and we call them the regular letters as simple as that they are going to come and maybe it is going to take six days seven days uh, who knows right but overall the thing is that if we want to have this kind of delivery, which is asked by our consumers, our customers of the postal office, then there needs to be some mechanism. There needs to be some system, right? So first thing first, out of the six different letters, we need to classify them, right? Who need what service? So postal office has come across three or postal office has decided three different services. Services number, service number one, which is the premium service. It, is known for its fast delivery. The meaning is if you want to send it to Bangalore, if you want to send it to Bombay, your letters will be delivered on the same day. It is so fast. And of course, if this is premium, postal office is going to charge you more, as simple as that, right? Then they have defined another service, which is express service, right? It is also a good service, but it doesn't guarantee the same day delivery. Maybe you are going to, now we, uh, the postal office is going to deliver these letters the next day, right? And that's why they are calling it the express service. Of course, the express service is going to be a little bit less uh, costly <laughs> as compared to the premium one, right? And then we have the regular, uh, which means, which doesn't have any service, right? We are just, it, it, is, it is a normal work of a postal office. They are going to take the letter and letter will take on its own time, right? Means postal office is not going to do anything with respect to these le regular letters uh, uh, to, to uh, send them as, as soon as possible. If that is the case, we have three different services and on the basis of what the customer has the customer is required postal office has decided to move them into three different services and that is why we have letter number one and two which are in this premium category letter number three and four these are in the express category and we do not have anything right on the letter number five and six but now the question arises: that is fine that mr vishnu you have this postal office building right here and the person who is sorting these letters, they have sorted out these letters, right? That they need the premium, they're starting to need premium. The next two need express and the remaining needs a regular one. But the whole sole point is, if this letter move from this place to any other building, right? Maybe uh, this letter wants to go to uh, uh, Bombay and while delivering it to Bombay, it needs to be delivered 
between a postal office building, maybe somewhere in uh, Haryana or maybe somewhere near Gujarat or maybe somewhere, whatever you can say, right? It, it's a middle point. The problem is that the decision of premium express and regular has happened in the service, uh, which is pretty near to where these letters were received by the postal office service, right? Maybe all the letters here are in Delhi, right? And we want to send it across the Bangalore or the Bombay. Now, whole sole point is that when these letters reaches to some middle uh, building of this postal office entire system, then nobody is going to understand whether this letter is a premium, express, or regular, right? Although the sorting has happened in the Delhi, but nothing is marked on it, right? So it is always important to mark these messages. And that is why a postal office service has a standard that if there are the letters which belongs to the premium category, I am going to seal them with specific color and that color is going to be green. I am just taking an example. Maybe they have the different kind of seal over it, right? For the express service, maybe they will have the yellow marking over it and the regular one, we do not need to mark them, right? If the packet is not marked, then it is not asking for a special service. As simple as that, right? So overall, when we see these messages, right? Once these are sorted, what we are going to do? We are going to mark them. Means the postal office is going to mark them with the green color, with the yellow color, and without any color means the message is going as it is. If the message is going as it is, the meaning is it doesn't need any special consideration, right? But the whole sole point now here is that if there is somebody who understand this color coding system, who makes rule for this color coding system, then this color coding system has some value otherwise not. For example, if, there, if we have a building of the postal office who do not aware or the people working under it does, uh, do not aware of this color or the marking scheme, they are not going to deliver this messages as a premium or this message is an express, right? No. It means that this color coding system is going to be really helpful if somebody is there to see that the green color means the express or the premium delivery. The yellow color means the express de delivery, the next day delivery, right? Right? So it doesn't matter, means if, if you have identified the packet, if you have classified the packet, and if you have marked it also, it doesn't matter, it is going to treat well until and unless your entire system understand these color coding, right? So in today's class, we will be marking and classifying our messages without any doubt, but it doesn't, uh, and, and I won't be sure that if I mark the packet this way, it is going to get the treatment because I need to tell everybody every router in the hop that if you get this message with this color or with this marking what you need to do with respect to that and this is very very important concept right so doesn't matter if you are marking or not there must be somebody who understand your marking right if you are marking them as simple as that now so let's move to the next board we are going to see exactly the same thing the same analogy with respect to our packets right so now Anjali is saying, I got the concept, right? And Rahul is saying, I get the concept, but let's try to understand this concept with respect to a router. So router have two interfaces. Uh, let's see, we have gigabit zero slash zero here, and we have gigabit zero slash one here, as simple as that. And we have many packets which are coming over gigabit zero slash zero interface of this router. Now, we want to give some special treatment for to some of the messages, right? And those some of the messages are maybe suppose some messages are ICMP message, some messages are SSH message, maybe some are telnet, maybe some are voice traffic, right? But the first thing the question arises that on what basis we are going to classify them, right? Right? And once we are classify them, right, then we need to mark them also. Otherwise, how the other router is going to understand that uh, that this message is from ICMP or this message is from SSH, right? Otherwise, it has to do the work again. For example, suppose we have two routers, router number one and router number two. It is getting lots and lots of packet, right? So this router has some specific things, router number one. And by seeing into specific field of the packets, right and which we are going to understand which we are going to discuss there is no doubt about it right we can definitely classify these messages right for example i can say the topmost four packet is icmp messages the middle one is the sss message and the lower four packets belong to voice suppose this is the case right 
or maybe i can say the icmp is the down one means uh, these four are icmp the topmost one is voice why i am saying this i will let you know so once these messages are reaching to this router definitely if i want to tell this router that send my voice messages as quickly as possible the router is going to say first thing first i need to identify these messages right and we are going to identify messages on the basis of what is there inside a particular packet we can match many of the things inside the packet and this router has this capability to do that right and suppose through any means this router can understand that the topmost four packet is my voice packet we are good voice means if i am making a call means if anjali is making a call to rahul inside my own company's network then my voice message is going over ip and if you see a particular voice message then it is working on a protocol which is known as real time transport protocol rtp which is going to be encapsulated in a protocol which is known as udp and of course after that your ip packet will be there and of course after that your frame is going to be there which is going to change at every hop the important piece is we can identify that this is a voice traffic using the udp port numbers or we can identify this is a voice traffic that uh, using this protocol that inside udp we are running rtp right what is the meaning of rtp rtp you are all free to go and check but this is a protocol which takes my little voice messages encapsulate them into udp and ip and send it over my ip network as simple as that right but the important point is just like in the previous system the the, the sorting guy in inside the postal office building knows that this message wants a special treatment why because the customer who has delivered this message has specifically gave me 500 rupees to deliver this message on the same day right and now here i am specifying all these condition that yes inside this message if we have a rtp if it is working on this particular udp port then this is a voice message router can do that for work but we do not till till now we do not know how we are going to do that but do not worry about it i will be talking about it. okay so the second thing is with respect to ssh this router has identified the next four messages are my ssh messages right and the remaining messages are icmp messages which are the ping now this router has also decided to mark these messages but where exactly we are going to mark right i think we understand that we need to classify and mark the packet but still now we do not understand how to classify although i have given you some idea regarding the voice traffic right but where exactly inside the packet we are going to mark if this is going to be frame can we mark some th something inside the frame if it is going to be ip where exactly inside the ip packet i am going to mark right and if i have decided to mark can i mark them with the green yellow red colors no right maybe at the end of the day inside the packet everything is 101010 right that means that we can mark or we can write a number inside this packet right such that it doesn't affect uh, the uh, uh, it shouldn't be the case that i am marking any field of uh, packet right it should be decided what what should i mark and with what number i should be marking right so overall mr router has decided now that we have voice message we have ssh message and we have icmp message and it has also decided that all the voice messages i will be marking with the green color you can see here right and all of the ssh messages or the packets i will be marking with the yellow color and icmp messages can be leave as it is now when the messages are when the packets are inside my router they are having different colors on it but if i color the packet does it means that it is going to uh, go really faster right for example i what i've just what uh, what uh, i i just have done right i have classified the message i have marked the message but it doesn't mean that this router will be taking some action right on its own we need to tell this guy we need to tell this r1 mr r1 right you have just identified some of the messages as voice some of the messages ssh right and some of the messages as icmp and this guy who is the administrator or who is the who is doing the configuration of this router has to inform this router that mr router please send my voice message as soon as they come yesterday we discussed about delay right if there are lots and lots of messages uh, which came before me and i am the voice message or the voice packet i have to wait because 
the router generally has only the first in first out queue right and if i do not want to wait then what is going to happen it means that there is somebody more intelligent who is looking into these markings right and with respect to these markings i have created some rules in this router that whenever you see the voice message send it as soon as possible if this message is way behind in this fee for queue right so consider this example that basically we have a long queue uh, suppose you want to enter in the airport and you have a long queue and then somebody doesn't care about this queue and directly goes into the gate right maybe the vip message right that is what exactly happening here that we have sss message we have icmp message and suppose they are in the queue first but if we get the voice message it is going to get the priority and it is going to go out right it means overall if you get uh, get to the basic of this classification and marking is just a way right to tell somebody that i have marked these messages if you want to prefer voice send the voice first if you want to prefer ssh send the ssh first it is up to you right but with any uh, any moment right you need to classify the message for example again taking the same example if you are in a queue to get to inside the airport right it is not the case that everybody can bypass the queue right if he or she is a vip member and if the security guard at the gate understand that this is the vip guy he will let it in or let him in right otherwise it is not the case with me and you as simple as that so the whole sole point is if there is a security guard security guard understand these markings similarly if you have teach this router how to tackle with this different colors of packet then it is going to honor these colors and on the basis of these colors these packet will go out but how this packet will go out is not the consideration of today's class we will be talking about it today's class we are just concerned about how we are going to classify the packet and how we are going to mark the packet as simple.